about some of the greatest musical compositions ever written. Tune in weekdays 9 to 10 a.m. and Wednesday from 9 to 10.30. Hello everyone, my name is Mick Hess, your host for Roving with the Art. It's here KSJE. Join me every weekday starting at 9 a.m. for the chance to hear full-length, unabridged opera, ballet, symphonic, and chamber music. I'll share news of local concert events that you may be interested in attending, background information about some of the greatest musical compositions ever written. Tune in weekdays 9 to 10 a.m. and Wednesday from 9 to 10.30. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Joining me now to talk a little bit about her campaign for Congress in the 3rd Congressional District, Democrat Teresa Ledger Fernandez is joining us. And good afternoon. It's good to see you. Thank you for coming on the show today. Well, thank you very much for having me. As you know, I'm a big supporter of uh, National Public Radio and our, uh, our public, uh, our, our, all of our public uh, communications, including PBS. Understood. Well, it's great to have you on the program to talk a little bit about the campaign, which you were telling me before we started, this is the first time you've ever run for, for Congress. So what have you learned over the last few months? I imagine a lot. You learn a whole lot. The wonderful thing is, one of the big things is I learned how much uh, people care. Uh, across the district, uh, people are truly uh, concerned uh, about uh, what's happening in our country. They're concerned about what we can do in New Mexico to make life better for our communities. And they are willing to give um, their resources, their time, which I always call the most precious resource we have, uh, the amount of time that people give to try to make a difference and to participate in democracy is impressive. And so I have uh, learned a lot. Uh, uh, that, that's the thing I always like to start with. I've learned a lot by how much people care. Um, and then, of course, they share the stories of the issues that are important to them. But just that, that their willingness to take of their time to participate in the democracy is wonderful. Very true. And, of course, this year the campaign has certainly been a lot different than most, most campaigns, I would think. You're doing a lot of events maybe virtually or you're still getting out and uh, meeting some voters face to face. No, but for the most part, we're doing things virtually. We, um, we did, um, you know, we had the primary. I was very fortunate in that we were able to have a primary, which was more of a conventional. And that did take me to every corner of the state. I was up in uh, San Juan County multiple times and uh, got to participate in the um, the uh, the Shiprock Fair. In fact, we won first place for our parade during the Shiprock Fair, Fair in the political category. So uh, that was really good that I was able to be very active and, and really be around the state, generate a lot of excitement um, and before uh, we were shut down for COVID. So those relationships have been very useful. Um, but we've been doing one of the series I like a lot that we've been doing is what we call Tea with Teresa where we have uh, addressed the substantive issues. So it's not just vote for me. It's like, let's talk about the major issues that are important to us. We've done everything from um, healthcare, which was our very first uh, team where we had some experts uh, from people who deal with addiction to rural health clinics to Native American health clinics. Um, and then our last one, we went from that to child care, the environment, storytelling, affordable housing, homeless, uh, how do we make sure we bring ourselves out of poverty? And last night was the last one, which was about uh, our, our cultural and creative economy in New Mexico and what we can do at the federal level to assist with that. Interesting. You got, I imagine you got an earful of uh, thoughts about all those topics from uh, folks you were meeting with. Yes, and it was wonderful to do it because we were able to bring uh, national experts, local experts, and then 
people were sending their questions through Facebook Live and or Zoom. And so we had lively conversations there. We, we, none of us ever wanted them to end. And we had hundreds and hundreds of people watching each of those. So it was very good to get that information out. Because, you know, campaigns aren't just about trying to elect one person or another. They're about the conversations you have about the issues that are important that we need to address. And that is something that I think is really important is what are we talking about? Uh, and how are we talking about? Are we going, are we just talking, you know, phrases and sentences? Are we going down into what specific policies can we do to make this better? And that's what we're trying to do with those forums. Very good. Well, and I know the 3rd Congressional District, of course, is a, a wide-ranging district across northern New Mexico. It's got very diverse uh, areas that you would be uh, representing. And so in this area, you know, energy is a big uh, concern for a lot of folks. It provides a lot of jobs. It's provided a lot of revenue for the municipalities in San Juan County. And, and certainly it is under some challenges these days, the oil and gas industry, the coal industry. And, and so what's your message to, um, to voters living in San Juan County about your thoughts about uh, energy and uh, how we deal with oil, gas, and coal, but still also embracing renewable and, and future technologies too? So my, uh, my message to the voters out there would be that what we need to get for San Juan uh, County uh, and for all of New Mexico is that we move away from a boom and bust economy where you know the oil prices go up and we have a lot more drilling and then they fall back down or gas prices fall. We know that gas prices fall and then you know people are losing their jobs and the businesses can't stay open. What I'd like to do is get us to a place where we are addressing um, the climate consequences of uh, fossil fuel development, which includes, sadly, coal uh, and uh, oil and gas. And uh, so we address the environmental consequences of that, while at the same time trying to make sure that we create jobs to replace those that will be lost in uh, the fossil fuel development uh, and make sure that they are good jobs uh, and that we diversify the economy so it's stronger and then make sure it's a more stable uh, economy for San Juan so we don't have that boom and bust. We need to remember that if we do not address the climate emergency that we are facing right now, the issues that I know San Juan is facing and that all of uh, the New Mexico are facing regarding drought, right, regarding drought, uh, regarding uh, the forest fires, regarding um, the the devastation that will happen uh, with climate change will be tremendous and we will not be able to live the way we want to live on our beautiful lands we call home here in New Mexico. So I think we need to address it. We need to address it aggressively, but we need to make sure. We need to make sure that we remember that it is those people in San Juan County who helped power the United States. They helped power New Mexico. And we cannot forget them now, that as we make this transition, both at the state level with the Energy Transition Act and at the federal level addressing climate crisis, that we must invest in those communities. And I commit to the people of San Juan County and those listening that I will make sure we invest in the communities that will bear the brunt of the transition as we move away from oil and gas. We, I commit to you that that's what I'll do. We need to do that. Um, what San Juan has that other places don't is an infrastructure for uh, electricity delivery, right? Uh, because of the coal plant, because of the electric plant, you have right. the power lines that are very important that are the, going to be the base for our future. Understood. And, uh, and I think you're right. We've heard that before. And, of course, the, the critics would say it's, it's hard to replace all those high-paying oil and gas and coal and coal mining jobs um, with renewable jobs because it doesn't, doesn't take as many people to run a, a solar field, for example, or a natural gas power plant even, that it takes to run a coal mine or a, or a coal-fired power plant. So replacing those jobs are, are what part of the challenges, I suppose, in what you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. And I think we need to be honest that they're not all going to be, we're not going to have a one-to-one -one replacement. If people come in and tell you that's what's going to happen, they're not being honest with you, right? Uh, so uh, that's not going to happen. But what we can ha ha say is that we're going to replace a lot of those jobs. We're going to push to make sure they're unionized if possible. We're going to make sure that the wages are good and that the benefits are good. Uh, then what we need to do is that's where we come to the idea of diversifying the economy. 
And I think that that is a key thing that we need to look to see is what are the other things that can come out of um, the resources that you have in San Juan County that we assist to diversify. You have lots of skilled labor that we needed to utilize. You have a wonderful uh, community college uh, where, you are, where you are at that we can use uh, to make sure we create the uh, education system to support. If we make sure we have the broadband, um, that we can have an innovation economy where a hub could be in, in San Juan. If we actually build the railroad that is being talked about, that we can create sort of the line for manufacturing. We do have the oil and gas wheels. You know, we're not going to shut down oil and gas tomorrow. That is not going to happen. Anybody who says that we're, that's what we're talking about, they're not being honest with you. We are going to have a transition. Uh, and in that transition, there are going to be some things that we're going to need to keep because we don't have, we don't have another way of, of flying our airplanes right now, right, of jet fuel. So there is going to still be demand for some, uh, for, for, for fossil fuels, for oil and gas. Right now, gas has been used very much as a transition. Uh, it's what we use to heat our homes. Uh, but we need to make sure we pull it out of the ground in a much healthier way. Right now, San Juan is, um, you know, our four corners is where we have that huge methane cloud. That methane cloud is so dangerous to our climate. Uh, it heats, it is responsible um, for so much of our, uh, our, our climate change problems. It is more, uh, it, it, it is uh, more destructive than uh, what comes out of uh, somebody's tailpipe, right? So we need to fix that too. Um, and that is something that I want us to do at the national level to meet the state level where we say we need to no longer allow these oil and gas companies just be spewing methane into the air. Two things. One is they're wasting it without getting any good use of it, right? We don't want to waste such a resource. The state doesn't get to tax it if they just spew it into the air. It smells awful. It heats up our environment. Let's get some jobs going where we capture that methane. And once we start capturing that methane, then, you know, we're not, we're not heating up the earth unnecessarily. Let's capture some of that methane. That's going to require some pipe fitters to go and, you know, do the piping so that we're not spewing it in the air, but instead capturing it. It might cost a little more, more money for the oil and gas people, but, you know, our job isn't to let them, you know, get away with wasting our resource, right? Our job in government is to say, use the resources wisely, um, and uh, you can still make money off of it, but use them wisely so that you're not harming us. So that's an example of cleanup is going to be another place where we're going to need to invest some money and put people to work doing cleanup. Uh, uh, plugging wells. We have uh, wells that are abandoned um, that have not been plugged. We need to hold the companies accountable. Uh, and um, those jobs, plugging those wells, will use some of the same skills that people have up there. Understood. Once again, it's going to be a mix of things. Right. I hear what you're saying, and I, and I follow that. And I know um, some folks, though, up here in the oil and gas industry, Ms. Ledger Fernandez would say, if you're at increasing costs on some of these marginal wells, it's going to make them um, too expensive to operate, and so they will be more abandoned wells that need plugging than capturing that methane that, that you're talking about, because our oil and gas fields are, are kind of middle-aged, and they're, they're not producing as much as they were back maybe during their, during their peak. But I imagine that's what they would want me to ask you about and mention to you when you say something like that. But let me ask yes. you about another topic, if you don't mind. And I, have, I have listened. Thank you. I, I understand. And let me ask you about health care, because I know that's another hot topic that a lot of folks are concerned with, especially during a pandemic. And so um, what are your thoughts on, on health care? Of course, the Affordable Care Act seems to be under, um, under duress from all sides in some cases. Um, talk to me a little bit about your thoughts on health care, please. So uh, this is an area I care a lot about. I have assisted in building three health clinics, rural health clinics, Native American health clinics. I'm working on our fourth right now. And I know how important it is to make sure that we have uh, quality health care that is accessible in the community where you live. Because if you have to drive too, too long to get there, it's not really accessible, is it? But it needs to also be affordable. And it's not affordable if you can't afford the co-pays or the deductibles. I know too many people who have health insurance but don't get the health care they need because they can't afford the deductibles or the co-pays. They can't afford those surprise billings. You know, all that stuff doesn't work. Now, 
I have come out in the primary and I'm being consistent of saying, I really think we need to move to a universal healthcare system, a place where we are not tied solely to employment as the way you get your healthcare. Because that means that if you lose your job in one place or, you know, one of those, uh, you know, companies change uh, or a pandemic hits where we have, you know, 30 million, 40 million people losing their jobs and many of those also losing their health care, that's not going to work. But right now, right now, what we need to do is preserve the Affordable Care Act because that was such a great move forward. Uh, it brought tens of millions of people into the ranks of having insurance. Uh, and right now the Republicans are... Um, the Republican elected leaders, I know a lot of Republicans who don't want this to happen, but the Republicans in the Senate and many Republican governors and this president are trying to get rid of the Affordable Care Act in the middle of a health crisis. That is, it's just, I mean, it makes, it makes me want to both scream and cry at the same time. Because don't they have any feeling for all the people who are relying on that as their health care? So I think what we need to do is make sure we preserve the affordable health care right now. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm okay with the Biden plan where he says, let's get the affordable health care and strengthen it, make it better. But then let's have that public option, which is going to be a way of us moving towards and seeing if it's better to have a single payer. Now, people always say that a single payer is the government's controlling the doctors. That's not what they're doing. It just means who's paying, you know, who gets the bill and processes it and sends out the payment to the doctor that you have chosen, that right. you have chosen. And that's what it does. And it takes away the middleman. It takes away uh, the insurance companies making billions of dollars every quarter on profit. Well, guess what? Who's paying those profits? We are. So that's where, you know, I'd like for us to go. If there are other ways that we can get to a universal health care where everybody is covered, I'll go for that. I will say the plan that I have endorsed, um, which is the Jaya Powell bill, has, uh, would save us, listen to this number, everybody. This is how much savings we have every year. $458 billion every year of savings in what we pay for healthcare. But more importantly, 68,000 lives. Because that's telling you that right now people aren't getting the health care. And that's why moving to a system where everybody could access it would save so many lives because people would actually be getting the health care they need. Understood. Well, Teresa Ledger Fernandez, we are out of time, I'm afraid, this morning. It sounds like we could talk about health care for a long time, longer, much more time, but we don't have it. And I apologize, but it's been great to catch up and visit with you and learn about your campaign and uh, where you're standing on some of these important issues during this campaign. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. You're very welcome. Goodbye, everybody. That is Teresa Ledger Fernandez. She is running, of course, for the 3rd Congressional District here in northern New Mexico. My guest here on KSJE.